Square India, tell me what did you invent? Oh, you'll be mind blown for my inventions. I'll tell you 15 inventions of mine that changed the world and also you use like daily. I use your inventions daily? Yeah, if you don't believe me, wait and see. So the first invention of mine is buttons. Like buttons in your shirt and stuff. Yeah, and it was made in the Indus Valley civilization like more than 4,000 years ago. But it wasn't used as the buttons that we are used to. It was used more for a fashion statement. Wait, like... How did that work? So back then, the buttons were made out of seashells. And when they wore buttons, that meant they were like just showing off how wealthy they were. Well, even 4,000 years ago, they had to like show off. Yeah, but they definitely had a better fashion sense than people nowadays. But back then, the buttons were never functional. Yeah, for us, we just used them to show off. But then some travelers from Europe came and they were like, oh, that's a good idea. But they were like, hey, those should actually do something instead of just being like fancy. And they used it to fasten their clothes and also for decoration to keep our like tradition going on. It's actually crazy that you made that like thousands of years ago though. Yeah, no kidding. Like I know nowadays buttons are made out of like plastic, wood, like any material can make a button. But we made that first. Like we're the ones who made it popular. Now time for the second invention. And we made shampoo. Hey, I thought shampoos are a new invention. Like... It's full of chemicals and stuff. Well, back in the 4th century BC, people in India were already into like hair care. And they would use herbs and fruit to clean their hair. Oh, that probably smelled so good. Yeah, even the word shampoo came from like the Hindi word shampoo, which means like massage your scalp. So next time you use shampoo, like remember to massage your scalp because that's actually what you need to like get your scalp clean. Okay, I'll remember to do that, but how did shampoo become popular outside of you, India. Oh, that's because there's a guy named Dean Muhammad who moved to England to open a spa in Brighton. So a normal spa? No, he actually gave head massages and was known as the shampoo surgeon. And he was so popular that he was giving the massages to the royal family. And his spa became so popular that hospitals even like referred patients to him. Imagine getting a prescription for a head massage. That's some serious cleaning there. Yeah, people in England needed some serious cleaning back then. Hey, we were always clean. Are actually serious? Do you want me to pull up your history like and tell you what you used to do? Okay, no, 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 no. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Okay, I, I want to look into that. I might even make a video about it. Please don't. Anyways, now it's the 19th century and people are using shampoos in their homes, but they were using soap bars, which made their hair dull and greasy. But then a German scientist named Hans Schwarzkopf made the first liquid shampoo. So I should get credit. Seriously, after all I've done, you want to get the credit, but like, I'm gonna be honest, you, you did something well, so you'll get a bit of the credit, Germany. Yay! Yeah, but nowadays shampoos are full of chemicals. They're actually bad for your hair. Yeah, that's why our people from thousands of years ago were right. Just use natural shampoo and also it smells really, really nice. Well, you're right. Natural stuff are making a comeback nowadays. Now for our third invention, we made the USB. And it's all because the inventor's wife wasn't able to print something for her daughter. Wait, what? You need to explain that a little bit. Okay, so the inventor is a Jay Bhatt and he studied engineering in India and then moved to New York and worked at Intel, you know, the computer company. And as I told you, his wife was trying to print something for her daughter, but back then devices needed like different connections and it was really annoying. Like, you know, every device needed its own connection. So he was like, you know what? Why not just make one connection for everything? So that's what made him invent the USB? Yeah, so I told you he worked at Intel, right? So him and his team were working on it and they actually made it work like back in the 1990s. And he got super rich from it, right? Nope! Huh? Yeah, like, he said it was part of his job and he didn't make any more money from it. Hey, that's kind of unfair. Well, he was happy he helped a lot of people. Alright, you know what? Next time I use USB, I'm definitely gonna remember that guy because he needs more credit. Yeah, we kind of got used to our credit getting stolen. Anyways, let me give you my fourth invention, which is chess. Like, the game, right? Exactly, and it started like a while ago, back in the 6th century, and it was called Chaturanga, which means like four divisions in Sanskrit. So it was not just two teams back then? Yeah, exactly. And there's a fun legend about the invention of chess. So the king back then wanted a game that would show the complexities of war. And a wise man named Sissa created chess and the king was really, really impressed by it. But how did chess become the game that we know right now? So the game moved from India to Persia, which is now Iran. India, if you mind, can I continue that part? Sure, go ahead. So we liked the game so much that we named it Shatranj and we added new rules and new words. For example, Shah for king and Shahmat for checkmate. So that's where it comes from. That is really cool. And then the Arab traders sent the game to Europe and they loved it as well. So yeah, that's, that's how you know chess. 
But don't forget, it's my invention. So chess is not the only game that we made, because for the fifth invention, we also made snakes and ladders. This used to be like one of my favorite games growing up. Yeah, because who doesn't like snakes and ladders? But when we made it, we wanted to teach kids about morals. How's that a game about morals? You roll the dice, if you get a ladder, you go up. If you get a snake, you go down, right? Like, am I missing something? Yeah, you are missing something, because for us, the ladders mean good deeds and the snakes mean like the bad deeds. Oh, so you would get rewarded if you do good deeds and like punished if you do like bad deeds? Exactly, now you get it. But when did you guys make snakes and ladders? Oh, I forgot to tell you, it wasn't named snakes and ladders, it was moksha patam. And also we made it like back in the second century BC. Also it got popular in Europe because when we went to India, we were like, oh, that game is fun. And we, we sent it to Europe. Okay, let's not get started on how much stuff you stole from me. Like, you know, I was one of the richest countries like a few hundred years ago, right? Hey, India, you were one of the richest countries? Yeah, man, that's a whole video you gotta make because a lot of people did not know that. Okay, I'll work on it. Hey, by doing that, you'd be revealing some bad stuff about me, man. Well, people need to know the truth, right? Do they? Also, India, about snakes and ladders, do you mind that we change the snake to a chew because kids are scared of snakes? You serious? Yeah, we didn't want to scare the kids. Oh, you're so sweet. Are you making fun of me? Yeah. Honestly, US, it's a drawing of a snake. Like, you don't have to be so sensitive. Now, I'm offended. Now, let me get to the sixth invention because that really changed the world as well. And that would be fiber optics, which is basically bending light. Bending light? So Narinder Singh Kapani is the inventor and he was able to make light bend. How did he do that? Are you sure you want me to explain the physics behind it? Um, okay, actually I'm good. But you said it changed the world. What does it do? Well, because of fiber optics, you can get fast internet because you can send like a lot of data really quickly. Okay, this is absolutely awesome. Yeah, you'll like it when your internet is fast, don't you? Yeah, who doesn't? Like, I remember having like a slow internet and playing games. Man, I was pissed. Oh, I hear you. Also, medicine, fiber optic can be used to look inside a human's body without surgery. Okay, you were not lying when you said it changed the world. Yeah, but also the inventor passed away back in December of 2020. But his invention still lives on. He definitely will be remembered. Also, buddy, you've been sitting for a while. Why not like get up and stretch a little bit? Like, did you invent good stretches or something? Oh, buddy, for her seventh invention, that would be yoga. How could I forget you made yoga? It's like 5,000 years old and it's used to exercise both the mind and the body. The mind? Isn't it just like stretches? How would that like help the mind? Okay, let me explain. So the word yoga means union and is the union of the body, mind, and spirit. So the different postures are called asanas and that's like, you know, the postures that you do to stretch your body. And then breathing exercises that are called pranayama and those are really good for you. Like, you know, you need to do some breathing exercises as well, man. Yeah, I heard those make you relax and stuff, right? Yeah, exactly. And then when you add meditation to it, that's when you have yoga. So it's a mix of all. Yeah, I think I really need to do more yoga. Yeah, you do. And you watching, stop the video and do some stretches. You've been sitting for a while. Oh, I actually needed a stretch, like a good stretch. Okay, that was not the stretch I was talking about. But anyways, if you use the toilet today, you might need to thank me. Why? Did you flush? Yeah, I flushed. Yeah, so you need to thank me because for our eighth invention, we made the flush system of the toilet. Wait, I know that's recent and it was done by Europe. How did you make it? Ah, recent. We actually made that 4,500 years ago. You had such advanced plumbing back then? Yeah, when people were digging holes, we were already using a flush. Like, were they actual flushes like the ones we have right now? Like, it's similar. Like, the waste can be flushed by nearby wells and stuff. And that made it so that we stopped the spread of disease and, like, made the cities cleaner. Yeah, from what I know, back then, they used to throw their waste out of the window. Yeah, we were not like that. But unfortunately, a lot of the knowledge was lost. So you're saying people thousands of years ago did stuff almost as good as we do it now? Yeah, we're all human. Why do you think that people like nowadays are the only ones who like use their brains? Like not back then they were also smart. That's true. I really wonder what it would be like if we did not lose all that knowledge. Well, you should keep wondering because we lost it. Now time for the ninth invention. But before I say it, like, how do you think people measured stuff back then? I don't know, like a ruler? And who do you think invented that? It's you, isn't it? Yep, that's our ninth invention, the ruler. But do they have the same system that we have right now? No, we made the ruler like 4,400 years ago. It's definitely different. But when it comes to accuracy, we made linings that are 1 16th of an inch. That's less than two millimeters. They made a ruler using that small of a lining? And guess what the ruler was made of? 
What? It was made of ivory. Imagine making a ruler from that precious of a material. Those are some fancy rulers. Yeah, but we put them to good use. Like the Indus Valley people built their streets really straight and their houses like fit perfectly. All that because they had a ruler? Yeah, man, don't underestimate what a ruler could do. I know you have it with you in schools and stuff, but it's really important. But obviously nowadays they're made of plastic or metal because, you know, no one would make them out of ivory. But honestly, who would think something invented thousands of years ago would still be used till now? It's amazing, isn't it? Also, there's another thing that we invented thousands of years ago and it's still used right now. And what would that be? The cataract surgery. No way that was done thousands of years ago. It was actually done 2,600 years ago by an amazing surgeon named Sushruta. So he actually invented cataract surgery? Yeah, and a lot of people would have been blind if it was not for his surgery. But how did he do that? It's a process called couching where he used like a sharp tool and he like pushed away the cloudy area in your eye that would make you like not able to see. He did all that thousands of years ago? Yeah, talk about being ahead in the game. And did other people use his technique? Yeah, so he wrote a book and that book was then translated to Arabic and to other languages as well. This is mind blowing. Imagine being one of the first people to fix people's eyesight. That's crazy. Yeah, it is. But even nowadays, cataract surgery is one of the most successful surgeries and it's all thanks to him. That did not stop there. Wait, did he do more? Yeah, he did. So our 11th invention is plastic surgery and that's what he did. So he made the cataract surgery and plastic surgery 2,600 years ago? Yeah, and specifically the nose job. I'm actually mind blown, but how did he do it? So he would take a piece from your forehead to rebuild your nose. Wait, why would people need to rebuild their nose? Oh, I forgot to tell you, people back then got their noses cut if they did like crimes. I'm so glad those rules have changed. Yeah, me too. Anyway, so Shruta was giving those people a second chance at life and giving them like dignity by returning their nose. It's crazy that he did that by taking a part of their forehead. Yeah, and he didn't stop there. Like, remember his book that I told you about? Yeah, so he had 300 procedures in it and like 120 different tools that people could use. How did I not know about him before? And now let's switch it a little bit for something everyone loves, which is candy. And that's our 12th invention. A lot of different cultures say they made candy. Yeah, and I cannot blame them, but for our technique, we actually chew down on like sugar cane and then like we realized we could boil it and make sugar. And then we can like use that sugar to make candy or candy sugar. Now I could go for some candy. Also, you know, 5,000 years ago, people used to wear like animal skin. Yeah, you didn't? Well, that's my 13th invention and that's using natural fibers. Wait, how? Like 5,000 years ago, we actually made clothes out of cotton. And besides cotton, we also used flax to make linen. So back then you were using plants to make your clothes? Yeah, so when everyone was like sweating because of how hot it was, like wearing animal skin, we were wearing linen. And then like when it was cold, we would wear cotton. I'm really impressed, India. Not to give you one of the most impressive inventions, we invented zero. Okay, that's a little bit underwhelming, like zero, what, that's... That's an invention? Yeah, back then, people had no way to show like zero in numbers. It's not that impressive. Like you can count three, two, one, then zero, you know? You're underestimating this. Like because of zero, algebra and calculus came to be. Really? Yeah, and also because of zero, like computers are now a thing. How? You know, the binary system like zero and one and stuff. Yeah, that's because there's a zero in there. It is very impressive, but I don't know if zero is an invention as you lived your whole life knowing about zero, but back then they didn't know it like 1,500 years ago. I probably could have invented that myself. Well, if you're so good at math, could you calculate the value of pi? Okay, this one, I have no idea how they calculate it. Well, one of our scientists did. Wait, you did it? Our mathematician Arya Pata just figured out what pi was. Like, did he do it easily? No, he actually used a lot of different calculations and complex stuff. But how did he do it without a calculator? Like, he got all the digits of pi? Well, he actually got 3.1416, but that's good enough for like 1,500 years ago. Okay, that is impressive. And guess what? He's the same guy who invented zero. Oh, you're cheesed about it, huh? Yeah, because it's a really amazing invention. All right, I take it back. I'm sorry. Okay, good. And also, that's 15 inventions. Thank you.